Hey everyone, Professor Bob Long here, your instructor for anatomy and physiology. The purpose of this video is to introduce uh, the course materials to you and talk a little bit about the syllabus. The syllabus is sort of the rules and the guidelines for the course. They will be loaded on Canvas. Uh, when I have a Canvas orientation, I will show you how to, to get to the syllabus and how to find the testing schedule. The testing schedule is, this, is simply the dates and times that we're going to take exams and what topics are covered. Both of those will be loaded into a module for the introduction to my Human Anatomy and Physiology Part 1 and Part 2 courses. Okay? Now, this is a two semester course for most majors that require it. So we have Biology 2401 and 2402 or Human AMP 1 and 2. We use the same materials. So I'm going to go over what you need to use for this class for those of you who are new to it. Now, Unfortunately, I don't have the current copy of the lecture textbook. I left it at home before I came to do this video. As you know, we're in the coronavirus shutdown and things are a little crazy. But the textbook that we do use is The Fundamentals of Anatomy and Physiology by Martini and Nath. And that was a third author that's been contributing named Bartholomew. And we're using the 11th edition. This happens to be the 8th edition, but the 11th edition looks very similar, but it has a purple cover. And I believe the person's in a different yoga pose or something. But nonetheless, this is the lecture textbook. Now, quite honestly, any anatomy and physiology lecture textbook will work. Even this 8th edition will work for my class. The reason we recommend the 11th edition is because all of my notes, anytime I refer to a page number or anything, it will be to the page numbers in the 11th edition. The material has changed very little. It's just the presentation of the material. So if I call for something, let's say on page, I don't know, 533, and we're going to be covering the sympathetic chain ganglia. If you have the old edition, you might have to look in the index, find the page number. It might be a few pages off, but ultimately any anatomy and physiology lecture textbook works. We recommend the Martini and Nath one. It is the closest to the way we present the information. But if you took part one somewhere else and have another textbook, don't go buy this book. It's way expensive and I know how tight money can be. So Martini, Nath, and Bartholomew's Fundamentals of Anatomy and Physiology, 11th edition. And again, this is an old edition. It's the only one I could find for now. Second thing you'll need for lecture. In my part one class, I have a note set. This may be an old one. The color of the uh, cover can change, but this is where you will take notes as you watch my lectures. All of my lectures will be delivered online. I've established a YouTube channel where I post videos of me lecturing on topics. Um, if you just went to the YouTube channel, it posts them by the latest video loaded. They will be all scrambled and mixed up from part one and part two. So the best thing to do is to go into your Canvas learning module system, the Canvas shell, find my class, and then go into the modules. And for module one, for part one AMP, it'll say the introduction to the body, directional terminology, and whatnot. And you can follow along in part one AMP. If you're in my part two class, so we have a separate note set for part two anatomy and physiology, and it'll say, you know, anatomy and physiology two note set by me. These are old. They still say, one says associate, one says assistant professor. I'm now a full professor. That doesn't mean much to you. So make sure you get the lecture textbook. Make sure you get the notes, the note sets. They're about, I don't know, 12 to $14, maybe $15 for the notes. And you can follow along with my lectures. Also, if you ever want to look ahead, you don't need to ask me what we're going to cover. If we finish on page 18, we're probably going to work through page 19, 20, 21 or so in the next lecture. So you always know where the material is that I'm going to test you on, and this will walk you through the lecture textbook so that you know where to read, where to follow, where to take notes. Okay. Um, also for lecture, there are a couple of books that I recommend as supplements. One of my favorites is called the Physiology Coloring Book. Most people use the anatomy coloring book, and that's good for lab, for the, an for the anatomy, but the hard part of the class really, and for most people, is the physiology. What are the parts doing and how are they interacting? And that's where the real fun and excitement in this class is. And this book um, takes all the important information and boils it down. I like for students to use it as a supplement, and many of my students who have completed my programs are now in nursing and other programs refer back to this book from time to time. And actually, many of my students, I just got some emails this week, tell me they still use their notes and the note set, even at level three and level four. I even have a student who's becoming a nurse practitioner telling me, hey, well, I'm still using your notes and the note set preparing for my exams. They're that helpful. So that's for lecture. Now, for the laboratory, uh, one of the things you'll need is the laboratory manual for anatomy and physiology. It's written by um, Michael G. Wood, 
Uh, professor Wood is a full professor here at Del Mar College, and he wrote this lab manual. They're on the sixth edition, that's the latest one, and from the first edition till now, he's been writing them, publishing them, and uh, it's one of the number one lab manuals in the world. So we truly are a first-rate college, even though some people think community colleges are not. Anyway, this is the lab manual that we're using, the sixth edition. Again, if you have an old edition, it can work. The page numbers will be off. Um, but ultimately the information is still there and we will refer sometimes to images here for lab and there's lots of labeled pictures all the anatomy we're going to be covered is in here and labeled so if you're ever having trouble finding uh, images um, for practicing for lab tests this is a great place it also has a number of exercises for you to do to help you practice the material okay in addition to that one other thing you will need is you will need what we call our laboratory guide for anatomy and physiology we have two of these. They're $3 each, I believe, or $4 each. There's one for part one, there's one for part two. And essentially what this is, is what I call the list of things to know. If you need to know it on the lab test, it's on this list. There are far more anatomical structures in that lab manual than you are responsible for. I simply cannot cover all the thousands and thousands of anatomical structures in two semesters. So what we've done is we've boiled it down to those structures that you're responsible for and put them in lists here. So when you look at a model or when you're going over a slide, I will tell you as I'm going over them with you, we're on page 27 or whatever, and we will go down the list so that you can see the spelling, you can see the words, and you can eliminate all the extraneous structures and just focus on learning these for your lab exams. Now this course is being taught fully online, so lecture and lab exams will be done through Canvas. There will be online exams. There will be large question banks. When you log in, now we might pull up five questions on this topic and five questions on this topic. They're not gonna be exactly the same questions that everybody else gets. So it's very randomized. And we have to do this to ensure the integrity of the course to prevent people from cheating or taking pictures of test questions and sending them to each other. Cell phones are strictly forbidden for on exams either reading into them. I've had students I see, we have the ability to watch you take the exams when you're done um, because you will be required to use Lockdown Browser. Lockdown Browser is a web browser like Google or um, Safari, but it's available through my Canvas shell. You have to download it to your computer. You have to log in the Lockdown Browser to take your exams so that you can't surf the web looking for answers. It's hard to do anyway because our exams are timed. Um, there will be no textbooks no materials available to you. It's simply your brain, the computer with the questions, and you clicking on or typing in the answers, okay? Um, now, in addition to Lockdown Browser, there's a Respondus Monitor, which is essentially a webcam. So in order to take this class, you have to have a computer that can utilize Lockdown Browser, and you have to have a webcam on your computer so that when you're done completing an exam, it will alert us if you keep looking down it does some facial recognition and if you keep looking down or if you're reading answers into a cell phone or if you look at a question and I hear you typing on another computer on the side, you get a zero for the exam and the zeros are not dropped, okay? In this class, we'll have six lecture tests worth 100 points each. I drop your lowest one. I don't drop one until you've taken at least three, but eventually we drop your lowest lecture exam. And every time you take another test, the computer will scan and drop the lowest exam. So 500 points or 50% of your grade will come from your lecture tests. We have four lab tests, which are over the laboratory guide and the lab manual. We'll have pictures of all the models in Canvas. When you learn to navigate my Canvas course by watching that video, I'll show you where to find the pictures and the videos of me going over the models. And we'll test you over those. Now. Um, you have to type in the answers for the lab tests and you have to type them, sp I mean, perfect spelling. If you're a letter or two off, the computer counts it wrong. There will be a chance to review your answers and learn from your mistakes. And on occasion, you can even, um, I guess, protest a specific question. Hey, Mr. Long, I spelled it with the S on the end. The computer did not have the S. I put pupils. It said pupil. Can I get credit? I'll consider that and I may do so. Okay. All four lab tests are 75 points each for a total worth of 300 points. So 500 points for lecture, 300 points for lab, that's 80% of your grade. 
And then you have a final exam. The final exam is comprehensive and will cover all six lecture tests and a little bit of lab stuff, but mostly the physiology and lecture. And that's 200 points. At the end of the semester, you have 1,000 possible points. If you have a 900 or higher, 90% or greater of 1,000, you have an A. If you have an 800 to an 899, it's a B, 700 to 799 is a C, 600 to 699 is a C, a D, and so on and so forth. It's all in the syllabus, and there will be a quiz over the syllabus and the testing schedule so that you guys can't say, I didn't know. You'll get a little extra credit for taking that quiz. Uh, it's just a few points, but it's helpful. But it'll help you make sure that you know the exam dates, you know what's expected of you, and you know um, the syllabus. So. You now know the materials, you know a little bit about testing, you know a little bit about how the information will be delivered. Lecture will be done through YouTube, lab will be done through YouTube and some um, images that you can print and label, and your exams will all be done online. There are, there's no homework, there's no papers to write, there's none of that other stuff. If I do give any extra credit, it's not because you ask, it's because I decided to give it to you, and I'm not a big fan of extra credit. If you're not willing to do the regular credit, why would I give you extra credit? And you don't get a shot at extra credit when you're out in the field. If you mess up in someone's medication, you don't get to go back and say, I'm sorry that patient ended up in ICU and almost died and has a $200,000 medical bill now when they should have gone home the day that I was administering the meds. Can I get a do-over so that I don't get fired? That doesn't work that way. You have to know your stuff. You have to know it well. So we present it in a way and we test in a way that forces you to learn it so that you're prepared for the next level. Um, a few other things are covered in the syllabus and you can read that information, but other than that, those are your requirements. You need an adequate computer, you need a uh, lockdown browser and a webcam on your computer or you cannot take the course, take the exams. You need the proper materials to allow you to study and prepare for those exams. I'm going to do the best to, to deliver the best instruction that I can through my videos. Uh, again, on YouTube, if you go to my YouTube channel, I think it's Professor Bob Long, Anatomy and Physiology. All my videos are listed there, but they're scrambled. It's best to go into Canvas and find the order that I want you to watch them in so it makes a little more sense. If you don't like the way I teach, you can take another instructor's class or you can search YouTube for someone else and maybe they explain things a little bit better than I do. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy learning from me as much as I'm going to enjoy teaching you because I absolutely love anatomy and physiology. I still get goosebumps talking about how beautifully our body functions. I still love this stuff and have a childlike wonder for it after teaching it for over 20 years at Del Mar and several years at UTSA. So, Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the flip side in lecture, and let's have some fun this semester.